Good morning and a warm welcome to everybody. Um, today we are not talking about 5G. Uh, mm -hmm. We are now talking about FixNet, in our case about fiber, but I think everybody will agree that we need 5G, uh, that we need fiber networks to, to, um, to build up a 5G network and to get the benefits out of this 5G net network. Without fiber, it's, it's, it's definitely not possible. Yeah. So when we, when we uh, look at the market, um, we see a rapid adaptation of the CSPs and the main factors with an impact on the market it, it itself. We have an increase of, of the operational efficiency which means um, we need um, more, more simple um, IT networks and also operations and also an automation of these net networks. We see a decoupling of the services and the, the network to maximize the val value. We see an expansion to media and also in evolving to digital services. And nevertheless, there's a rethinking of uh, customer experience management and the transformation from a telco to a technology company. When we have a look on the challenges, um, yeah, we, I, I think we all know it, that the penetration of the fiber networks, not only in, in Germany, also in other can, countries, is not sufficient. Yeah, we need much bigger, much more um, yeah, powerful fiber ne networks to, to, do, uh, to, to have a sufficient network to fulfill the requirements out of the digital growth, the customer demands in rural areas and also the needs for the 5G net network. Therefore, for sure, we need money. We need in, in investments from the shareholders and we need fundings, but however, it will be not enough to, to get more money. We have to um, improve the processes. We have to, um, to we, we need high scalable de deployment models and smart traffic management and all these things to reach our targets. Yeah. So how can we face these challenges? We talked at the beginning about it. Uh, one important factor is to split the services and the, the networks that we can see in the last few years where a lot of new fiber companies are stepping in, into, the, into the game. And that is a good thing. Why is it good? When you see on the right side of the picture um, the traditional operator, let's say, with a service and a network, um, they, the, the network part or the value of this network is not such big. So when, when you split the service and the network, you have the chance to in, increase that value by 30%. Per percent in total, and with a val valuation multiple of 15. Yeah. Why can you do that? Th these new companies can build up their networks, their whole infrastructure, IT from scratch in a greenfield. Means they can use very efficient processes and also new IT sys systems. And on the other hand, they can sell their capacity, their fiber networks to multiple CSPs and not all, only to w one of them. Yeah. And therefore, there is a much higher utilization of their networks, which means higher in incomes. And at the end, there's also another factor. If, if you use lean or open source OSS and BSS, systems, you can also save money, but not only save money um, for the IT it, it itself, for, for the software, 
um, these open source software normally is cloud native, mm -hmm. means you have a very high level on automation and uh, also you can use CI, CD, CT for your operations with, with, uh, which also reduces your operational costs. To summarize the challenges of the new netcos and uh, to consider the driver for decision making like market, economy, service and op operations. We have to improve the operation and the maintenance to reduce operational costs, mm -hmm. especially for the energy consumption. We have to optimize the infrastructure and take care of the current and also future de demands. We need a very efficient construction and deployment model, and we should find new bills businesses to in increase the, um, the in incomes. And now we will explain, or Fer Fernando will explain, how we would do, the, do that with an efficient operations and uh, deployment model. Mm -hmm. Fernando, okay. please. Hello, everyone. In terms of uh, the goals of these companies, uh, such as we have uh, already explained, uh, we are talking about, in many cases, about companies of new creation. This means that they have a limited amount of money to invest. They have to optimize how they invest the, this money, and they need to be very efficient. All the companies must be, must be efficient, but in this case, with these limited, limited resources, they have to be more efficient, more efficient than others. In order to do this, and in order to leverage the, the goals that they have, basically, to improve the, the, the investments, to be as efficient as possible in terms of network deployment, network operations, and sales. And uh, also, <coughs> uh, reducing cost uh, uh, dramatically, uh, analytics is one of the pillars they can use in order to, to do this, and it's actually the tool that is, is being implemented in most cases uh, in order to accelerate the launching of these kind of companies and, and the, initial, uh, the, the initiation of, this, uh, of their business. Uh, if we talk about the benefits of data analytics, data analytics, obviously we all know that it can provide many, many, many value if we have the right data to, to do this. Uh, we can use it to make the right decisions, to, to provide enough information to, to make an accurate uh, uh, decision when it is needed. We can use it to reduce uh, cost in terms of operations and network deployment. We can optimize the network operations processes, uh, automating through the usage of analytics, the, the diagnostic resolution of incidents, but also reducing the field services management uh, cost, that is a very relevant piece of cost for these kind of companies. We can optimi optimize also the energy consumption, uh, also a very relevant <laughs> piece of cost in, in, the, in their numbers. And we can use it to uh, predict the demand that they will have in a specific uh, area, uh, optimizing or supporting also the optimization of the focus on the investment that they, they, they will do. Uh, in terms of uh, different levels of maturity of the, of the analytics uh, strategies, obviously uh, the important part is the data. No? And we, we try to start, especially in these companies that are starting from scratch, uh, from the initial stage where they have to first define the strategy, the data strategy, in order to uh, identify the potential so the data sources and in order to have the right processes to, uh, to storage this information. This is the basis to start working with analytics. Without data of quality, it doesn't make any sense to make any other kind of investment. So uh, this is the, the initial activity. Once we have this information, we start uh, uh, trying to understand what are the most relevant variables of the, uh, of, to explain the processes. And once, when we have this, we have the data, we have the knowledge, knowledge enough to start thinking about the right variables that uh, explain what is happening and what will happen in the future, we can go to the mature uh, uh, stage where we start thinking about a predictive model, models able to predict the future, to predict what if something will happen in terms of incidents, in terms of demand, in terms of whatever other, other process uh, that will help us to work more, more efficiently. On, and also will help us to uh, go to the target of the autonomous operations, that basically is the operation of the network without any human interaction. This is, the, is our goal, the goal of all the people that is in, uh, working on the operational areas of, of the telcos. And, and well, this is the, the, the basis of, of, of the future that we expect to have in, in, in some time. 
to have this autonomous operations network. Very important to have a clear strategy, as I said before, in terms of the process that we want to optimize, which are the right data sources, and uh, defining the specific strategy to work with. Uh, <coughs> one very relevant uh, process to, to optimize through analytics is the energy consumption. Energy consumption is, 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 is uh, very relevant for any company, but for this uh, fiber cost as well. And, well, what is basic, as I said before, first uh, starting collecting the information, monitoring, defining the right alarms that must be activated, uh, the right actions to reduce any potential risk in terms of uh, costs, and also uh, apply analytics, advanced analytics to opt optimize all these, these processes. What is the, uh, we can reduce the cost in terms of energy by many levers. We can go to uh, alternative uh, power supplies. We can, uh, very, in, and it's a very relevant action, optimize the air, con air conditioning uh, costs. We can uh, <coughs> also act uh, in the contrast that we have with, with providers in order to optimize uh, the, build, the billing of this, of this energy. And this is uh, possible in a real-time mode if we apply uh, advanced analytics. Uh, what, the way we are working with our clients in this area is defining, uh, mm, we saw an example in the, in the slide, uh, <coughs> defining models able to predict the, data, the, the energy consumption and identify in real time any potential deviation. This means that we can act in real time in, in case of any potential risk because someone installed a, an unexpected device, because something is up and running and shouldn't, these kind of actions can be, can be solved uh, directly. And also we can use it to monitor any kind of efficiency actions that we could launch. Since we predict the, the, the regular consumption of one uh, uh, location, we can identify if we launch an initiative, if really it's impacting or not in the consumption. This is something that is very useful and we are implementing also in, in, other, in other locations. The improvement of the, of the fiber deployment process as well. In this case, we are talking about companies that where the final user is not the client. The, the client in this case is, an, uh, is another uh, operator or is a third party. Uh, so in the terms of identifying the right areas to launch an, a deployment process, we, we need to take into account more variables than the typical ones. Not only the technicals in terms of distance, barriers and others, but also uh, presence of uh, these uh, companies in one side, potential uh, uh, of selling uh, to these companies because they uh, have not a very mature process of network deployment in terms of fiber, whatever other, other case must be taken into account in order to decide where to, to launch uh, a new deployment process and, and in order to optimize the return of this investment. In terms of uh, how are we helping entity data uh, to our clients in this area, since we, we found that the, well, when in this specific area of, of business, there is a new reality. The reality is that new companies are appearing. They want to, be, to launch business in very short time in the market, and they need something different in order to do this. We define the concept of InfraCo or FiberCo in a box, basically uh, a set of solutions able to, uh, be, uh, that, um, to accelerate the process of launching a new company like this. No? Basically, we, we combine different solutions in a modular uh, approach. It's an open uh, concept uh, where we have different modules uh, standardized, uh, organized through the, the standards of TM Forum, uh, able to scale, able to uh, evolve in terms of uh, uh, support for, for future uh, needs uh, due to evolutions in the technology, and that can, can help to uh, launch these operations in a very short time. We, we, have, uh, we work with uh, open source, as I said before, cloud native solutions, this is the approach. Also integrate with this, this kind of solutions with uh, standard uh, commercial uh, modules. And this provides a huge value because in less than six months it's possible, and this is something we have already done, launch a new operation uh, in, a <coughs> in a regular uh, manner. So uh, applying this, this concept, uh, this is the, well, the general overview of the, all the processes that the uh, solution, this accelerator can, can, can support. We can provide support all the, pro the, the processes needed to launch a company like this, from the VSS to the OSS, uh, all uh, with this uh, open and flexible uh, modular approach and uh, providing the level of results that I mentioned before, uh, that a new company can be launched in, in less than six uh, months. And well, this is uh, what we've been today for, for the presentation. Let me, let me add that well, uh, we understand that the fiber cost and the infra cost in, in general are opening the doors to a new kind of uh, collaboration among uh, companies in the, in the sector. 
uh, is a different way or, of, of, of working, more collaborative, less competitive, and well, more sustainable as well, because we are optimizing the, in general terms for the market, the investment in, in network deployment, and we understand it's a good opportunity for, for all of us to, to move forward in this, in this business. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Fernando. Are there any questions from the audience to the two gentlemen here? So to give you a little um, impression from the German market, I'm a freelancer, I'm working from home, I'm desperately waiting for a fiber connection <laughs> and for any company to, to send me one to uh, the street I'm living in. Um, in. If I understand correctly, the AI-based decision um, mechanisms that you talked about are also gorging the, the customer interest. Um, uh, yeah, would, would, there any, would there be any way to tweak that system from the customer side? How could I step up in the, in the importance of a, of a company uh, that's looking for potential customers? Yeah, yeah, for sure. In terms of, of definition of uh, analytical uh, model, mm -hmm. we can uh, add as much information as, as we want. So, so obviously, we uh, we are trying to improve on con a continuous basis mm -hmm. the, the quality of these uh, these models and uh, adding the, the information about the final user also will improve this this so kind of, could, of process. Could this be a kind of bidding system that I can say, okay, I'm I'm ready to pay 300 euros per month. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, actually the, 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 that should be a very good <laughs> data source because actually okay. what we try to do is that is, is estimating mm -hmm. the potential uh, of the uh, of the of the clients that we will have in a specific zone. So so we have mm -hmm. the, mm, this information will make even more accurate the kind of uh, uh, the, mm, predictions or uh, estimations that we can do for a specific zone. So there is still hope. Thank you very <laughs> much. Okay. okay, thanks. So next up Thank is you. Mr. Martin Butz from Thank you. Oh, to your applause. Yeah. Thank you.